One time I was sitting down with uh, my discipleship class. On Wednesdays, we went to uh, discipleship class. It's for those that are serious about following Jesus. And there was a uh, woman sitting in a chair and everybody was speaking and she was silent. And she listened to what everybody was saying. And she said, that is true, but that can also be dangerous to teach if someone is not ready. So, what I've been doing, I'll expound upon that. I'm an almanac of Holy Spirit inspired scripture. And I was walking around with my beloved, the love of my life, the one and only. And me and the Holy Spirit wanted to have this surprise for her. She wanted a godly man that loved God. And me and the Holy Spirit said, we'll do better than that. Clean cut Christian. Oh, we will show you a clean cut Christian. On this channel, beloveds, you have to consider that what is going to be taught because of this decision that was just made. How is it going to glorify Jesus that I did it? So the little ones will have even more reason to love God. So we have to pick apart all of the um, perceived godly teachings that were left alone before my return. And the name Lucifer, the Holy Spirit and I were talking about it and he said, it doesn't sound Hebrew. And then the king of Tyre, he was a man, remember that? We sent a prophet to talk to him. Yeah. Prophets talk to, to men. Isn't it Latin and trans? Or, doesn't seem to fit with Hebrew origin. <clears throat> so consider um, what you're teaching and what you're telling people now. Because what I've been doing for the church is issuing a strong warning because also the verse that's been in my spirit is, and I will strike down with furious anger those that try to poison my children and you will know that my name is the Lord. When you are teaching and you are in a position of leadership, you will be held doubly accountable. So <clears throat> I was walking around with my wife yesterday and I could hear her little soft voice and distinctly, <laughs> very, very distinctly, even the emotion, the excitement, uh, she was very talkative. And what the Holy Spirit's been, I could actually define the words. Now, normally if I speak to someone, they can say words to me, but their spirit will say something back if they're alive. 
And that's been a huge thing um, between me and my baby. Because when we're in a mode where we're uh, having a more defensive type of spiritual conversation, because she's on guard, whereas I'm more like, I don't care because I know and I'm me, I'm Jesus. So I'm not even worried about it. And one of these times we were uh, probably about to have one of those discussions and the spirit just told me, just go outside, we're gonna go watch a soccer game. And a lot of times when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and gives you a statement like that. For me, it's a continuous conversation with God. It doesn't stop. Remember that it may not be what you're thinking it's gonna be, it's something even better. And that it takes time for those pieces be in place so that the whole entire picture and the understanding, the understanding, the understanding is always what a teacher cements in his students' minds. Once you understand it, that means it clicked. Once it clicked, that means you know how to do it and no one can take it away from you. So one of my prophets this morning <clears throat> was talking to me and then they just stopped and they said, okay, I'm just going to say what you tell me to say. That's how we do it. That is how we do it. And another one was saying, not yet. All right. Holy Spirit was telling me not yet. Because I always do that. I like to surprise my beloveds, my people. They mean so much to me. So the Holy Spirit was showing me this morning, we're playing soccer with the church. And I told my wife, because my people are excited right now. When I was hearing what my wife was saying, and I was, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's how I wanted my wife to feel about me. I'm anxious. For one thing, just to see my baby again. And the Holy Spirit represents, we'll keep going. The Holy Spirit represents, the Holy Spirit represents the ball. And part of my teachings if I'm in the zone and I'm saying what the Holy Spirit is telling me to say, that's both for revelation for you and for me. And when someone seems to take offense at it, that always kind of, it's not something that blindsides me. It just do not understand. So when I'm perceiving what people are, teetering on as far as their own thoughts rather than prayerfully considering it and then getting their confirmation and accepting the confirmation, receiving the confirmation, receiving the confirmation, receiving the confirmation. And my wife said yesterday, and it was the most beautiful note I've heard come out of her lips. I know this is God. This is too perfect. It has to, be. it is God. And then I ended up drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and that was confirmation on a video that I had made that the Lord is pleased. Thank you, babe. So I told my wife, I'm playing for a new team, a winning team. 
And I played for the church for so long and we could not win. Because how I felt the church was playing the devil and uh, them, I'm going to call them them, were influencing more than we were. My team, my prophets, the Holy Spirit is moving back and forth through all of us. And the goal, make you feel the love of God in a tangible, undeniable way. And on your throne, Lord. Braving your feelings and your emotions does make you stronger and it builds your character. And it's necessary. We have emotions so that we can relate to other people. That fellowship makes someone feel loved. And if they sense that you've been there too. And you're saying, but Jesus pulled me out. These are the basics, beloved. The Holy Spirit was telling me, start with the basics. So the spiritual gifts that my prophets possess is what's going to set my church apart from any other. And you cannot fake a spiritual gift. And I realized that I'm excited about my church. I haven't been excited about church in a long, long time. And watching them um, operate as themselves is what I've always wanted for my wife. And I've been sitting here and walking around just thinking about how amazing my wife is and some of the things that she does. The miscommunication, how it happened, and then what happened in other people's marriages. How um, I always called it a brother against brother spirit because it's really good at uh, making a statement be taken the wrong way, especially if you're very spiritually sensitive and very uh, cognitive to the spiritual realm. Uh, the difference between angels and, because uh, I told people my angels are here with me. And explaining all of that we will uh, do at a later date. But having to live it to be able to say, okay, here's my testimony when I dealt with what you're talking about. Took years. So, I mean, my very name, even my birthday, beginning and end, it's symbolic Hebrew. And how people got fooled, because uh, the scripture said there will be many that call themselves the Christ. That, that has happened. Whether you met somebody that was on, uh, what do they call that drug? DMT, and then they decide that they're the end and beginning of the world and they are everything, or, and then people, whatever psychedelic or uh, mind-altering substance they're on, and then they have a familiar spirit or a lying spirit, 
that thing can twist them up in strange, strange ways and lead them to uh, all kinds of things. So all of this is necessary in order to cement a church based on God and the truth. So playing soccer for my team, and I'm doing this in the morning, and then the next day or throughout the afternoon, I'm also watching my prophets echo the same exact sentiment. Because I had always said that about the church. We should all be saying the same thing. We should all be on the same topics. And many are having that problem with... Uh, how am I going to just do this? You can play soccer with us. <laughs> All right. I love you. <laughs>